Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe. Hey guys, this is Jenna Duddleston from Bar Talk with Jenna, and you're listening to Zero Dark Nerdy. Go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network and your favorite site to go online betting. It is betonline.ag. We're also brought to you by Red Cinemas right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Be sure to check out their website for movie times, redcinemas.com. We got a very special guest in the evening today from the Believe Podcast Network. She hosts Bar Talk with Jenna. We have Jenna Duddleston in the building. Yes. <laughs> so did I say your name correctly, Duddleston? Yes, you said it correctly. Excellent. Excellent. So how, like, I, I'm sure you, your name has been butchered before in the past. Like, what is the story you could tell us here about someone just completely annihilating your last name? Okay, so when I've my like sophomore year of college um was an athlete my whole life I should, backstory so um was always my name was always announced in some form in a gym or whatever um and it always some people got it and some people didn't but the the best of the worst was my sophomore year of college when I kind of started going down this media path mm -hmm. um I got the chance to work on an ESPN's E60 project which oh, is wow. I always wanted to do that I love that form of storytelling and you know you're a sophomore in college is what you're 20 and you know you, you kind of feel like you can like like look at me and my badass self money is piang you motherfuckers like i'm so excited and nothing nothing i repeat is more humbling than getting in the bus when i was in minnesota driving to the site with the basketball team to re to film what we needed to film yeah getting my media pass to me and they spelled my name jonah double a sostin J-O-N-N-A-D-U-B-B-E-L-E-S-T-O-N-E. -E -E. Oh my so God. You want to talk about like starting at the bottom? <laughs> like <laughs> so what was funny about that story was like I remember in that moment being like, oh my God, this is hilarious. And I'm gonna save this forever. It's somewhere in my parents' house. I still I saved the media pass because I was like, you this is the like you gotta start somewhere and right. it's at the bottom. And I emailed the producer that I worked with at the time. His name is Martin K. And I actually can't even pronounce his last name because it's like Kardashian plus 12 more letters. <laughs> and he That's said awesome. to me, he, he was like, Jenna, I totally understand it. Like, you know, I've been there and I wanted him to remember me. And then when the um the E60 came out, they obviously emailed me like a month or so before to get, you know, what, how do you want your name in the credits? And I'm like, oh my God, my name's going to be on ESPN. And they misspelled my first name. <laughs> Goodness. So it was one of those things that I only saw. It was on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Um, I'm with my whole family, like my whole family. So I have like huge family. There's like, yeah you know, 50, 60 of us at the time. And I'm like, oh my God, look at my names on TV. And they, they forgot the J and Jenna. So it was Anna Duddleston. So again, it's like, you got to start somewhere. We're slowly right. getting there, guys. We're slowly getting there. <laughs> I mean, I know you're crushing it lately, so I see your full name everywhere. So you are, you're, you're making strides here. We all got to start somewhere. Oh, all, yeah. And literally the bottom, <laughs> it, it's, it's a scary place to start, but then it became this ongoing joke in every internship I had. Mm -hmm. No get my name right. And I was like, I don't really think it's that hard, but, <laughs> no. but, I, but I think that's why I created a podcast. I was like, I can get my name right. So there we have go. no choice. There you go. Our partners at betonline.ag continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including NBA Summer League, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE, that is B-L-E-A-V, to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. So speaking of which, tell uh, you know our listeners out there a little bit about Bar Talk with Jenna and how you got in with the uh, the Believe guys. We've been uh, with them now for I think going on two years, and we're introduced by a mutual friend, and they've just you know Cam and Connor and everybody have just been 
so fantastic. So it's always good to interview and get to know other podcasts that are also on the Believe Network. So how did how was kind of your introduction into that goes? And then, you know, of course, tell people about the, the podcast as well. Yeah, so I guess we'll start first with the the concept of of bar talk and how it came about. And I was 21. I was interning at this place called Campus Insiders in Chicago. Um, they don't even exist anymore, but it was the very beginning of this form of media, like digital media. And people knew that you had to put stuff on your phone and online, but no one knew kind of what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And I remember being at this place and they clearly called me in on a day I wasn't supposed to be there because no one was in the office. It was the day after the very first national college football championship game. Oh wow! And so everyone, everyone was off the next day, but I still showed up and uh, I remember walking in and the guy, I don't even remember who I was talking to in the office, but we were, you know, just, you're trying to ask questions. You're trying to be engaging. You, you don't really know what's going on. Like first day of an internship is already awkward to begin with. Right. And I remember saying to him, like, or he said something along the lines of like, you know, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to be like ESPN, but we don't want to be like ESPN. Hmm. And I was like, well, in my head, this is like internal. I was like, well, you look yeah. just like ESPN. <laughs> right. And so then I remember he was like, well, we want it to be more of a laid back. We want it to be more laid back because we feel like people online are more of a laid back audience compared to television. Sure. And then the idea, it was bar talk with Jenna literally came in my head in that moment. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. So I didn't. So I sat on the idea for seven years, actually. I didn't do anything with it because okay. I didn't know what it looked like, but I loved the name. And I was like, I like the name. And it also pays like homage to me growing up in a bar. Like I grew up in one of the oldest Irish pubs in the United States. Oh, wow. So I was pursuing sports broadcasting while working in a bar at my family's bar and other bars. Yeah. And I found myself constantly comparing the two worlds and, and talking about the other. And I was like, how can I marry them and like bring my two worlds together in a really kind of beautiful and unique way. Mm. And then it was finally, I turned 27 and I don't know for anyone, 27 is a weird year in your life. It's just, I don't know why it's a weird year. Yeah. And I just remember being like, what am I doing with my life? I want to do this. So beginning of 2020, I said, okay, you're either, you're going to do this and it's either going to fail. And then you can say you've tried and then you can move on to something else right. or you can do it and it changes your life. So like, shit or get off the pot, bitch. Like yeah. I'm very brutally, I'm very brutal with myself. I love it. And so then I was doing all the back work for it, working on the logo, wh what it would be like, what would we talk about? Um, and all of these things. And then as most of us know, 2020 is a very significant year, not only in America, but in the world. Um, I knew I was going to lose my job. I just knew I was going to lose my job. Yeah. I knew it was going to be a really like low point in my life. And I couldn't explain what I felt. I just knew. And so at the time I was living with two of my friends and they were like, you'll get a job. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Wow. I, I'm not. And so I gave myself one day to be sad, had my pity party. Um, and then when I woke up the next day, I said, you need a reason to get out of bed, dude. Like, what's the reason? And I said, I want to bartend. And I was like, well, how can I bartend? And so all I had was my phone. And I said, well, we have the whole setup. Like, yeah. why don't we just go, do it live? Like everyone's going to be stuck at home. Let's make it feel like my bar community is still together and we're still interacting with each other. Yeah. So it literally started as a reason for me to get out of bed. And that's no exaggeration. I, I just needed to not sleep until four in the afternoon. Right. And I did 40 shows in 10 weeks. And it was one of those things that like by my fifth episode, I had on LaRoyce Hawkins, who's on Chicago PD. And yeah. I just remember being like, okay, like we got something here. Like, they're, like people are coming, you know, like you could have a good idea, but how is, how are people going to react? And so then it was like, okay, people are coming. Okay. This is great. And then I took a break, um, mainly because I felt really burnt out and I was like, I need to like recharge myself and like, I need to work on some things. And then we had all of the rioting and the looting in our country. And I was like, I don't want to fucking hear me. No one wants to fucking hear me. So what was, this sounds bad, but like what was great about that time was I actually knew nothing about podcasting. Yeah. So I took, I took a course okay. during that month and I was like, how do I podcast? How do I set up a schedule? Like all of the, 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 the back end, the product, the pre-production and post-production work that like, is not the sexy fun part that people talk about, but it's the most important part. Yeah. So 
it, it, so again, that's kind of a long winded answer, but I did this completely as like an entrepreneurial base, yeah. but knew I was like, I'm going to get picked up. I don't know how I'm going to get picked up. I don't know who is going to be the company, but yeah. like, this is something. And it was honestly, in the beginning, it was hard to explain to people because I, I kind of go into different worlds a lot. And I like that. I, I don't like being in a box. I like being in different conversations. And yeah. that has to do with you have every type of conversation sitting at a bar. Yeah. And I didn't want anything to be off the bar, off limits, you know? Yeah. Um, but I got, I've heard of Believe um, because I applied for a job I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, so um, beginning of this year, um, started looking around kind of, you know, I'm like, all right, let's just see if there's a way that I can maybe work for a company and, and, and still grow this. And, you know, like, like you're yeah. just trying to figure out. And, and it was also like, I had quit my bartending job in September to do this full time. Like I was like, I need to like really give this a go. Um, yeah. I had like five months of savings stash stashed and I was like, okay, I'm gambling on myself. Like yeah. let's ride bitch. Like let's do it. So I did that. And then in February, applied for a job, did the interview, knew right away in the interview, I didn't want it, mm -hmm. never thought anything of it. Um, family friend of mine was working with the president of Believe and through a, a lot of weird invisible strings, basically, when I applied for that job, the people in the company um, where our, our president was working at that other company as an outside contractor. Right. And someone that had worked under him basically heard about me and my resume and thought that I was great and they couldn't believe I didn't get hired. Yeah. And so they reached out to me and uh, it was literally like, I literally prayed to God. I was like, can you just throw me a bone, man? I'm dying over here. Just throw yeah. me a bone. Like right. I, I just, I need something. And then yeah. the, the next day, like, I'm not even kidding you. The next day I woke up and had a text message that was like, hi, I'm friends with, Erica, who's my family friend. And they were like, I think I have a job for you. Yeah. And I got the job a week later. That's awesome. That's yeah. So again, very, very weird. It's, it's, yeah. it's a weird story, but um, yeah. it was a relentless pursuit of like, I'm, I just know that this is something and I know that this could work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be around people who were really, who were like smarter than me. And I wanted to right. learn from people that knew more than I did. Um, and so I didn't really know a lot about believe. And then yeah. once I learned about them, I was like, I love their vision. Yeah. I love the people here. Um, we're hungry mm -hmm. and there's something that's in that's here. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is the place I need to be. So very grateful for the, for the very weird string of events that led me, <laughs> that led me there to say the yeah. least. Agreed. And I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, I love this combination of just, you know, artists and, uh, you know, just people that are passionate about this space and mm -hmm. the collectives and being able to bounce ideas off each other. Like I get a lot of great ideas on your IG page, like, uh, cause my daughter, she's a film student. So she helps me out a lot <laughs> with the yeah. visual stuff. And mm -hmm. I've actually sent her some of your stuff. Like I'm not trying to like copy it tremendously. No, but, hey, I really copy. Like how she, how she does this with the camera, you know, cause I like how you can kind of go in and out. And I was like, Jordan, can you yeah. do this? Or do I need to buy like two cameras or oh. whatever? She's like, no dad, you're good. Like yeah, just like show me like what you like, and then I can make it to where it, it looks like your own and you're not completely like ripping it off of someone. And I was like, so, oh. okay. So to go back <laughs> of you saying, copying um yeah. in that podcasting course i took yeah the very first thing that this course had me watch was a ted talk yeah and it talked about bob was bob dylan the greatest artist of all time or did he copy and did he steal right. and so they basically said that it, bob dylan was influenced by other kind of like bluegrass folky music mm -hmm. but he took it and he put a twist on it yeah so Every person in the creative space yeah. is actually stealing. It sounds really like, I wish I could find a better word besides stealing. Right. But I always, we're borrowing, but I, yeah. I say like, you're creating your own kind of sauce. Like, right. Right. and you know, there are things that I take from like, um, like Nicole Arbor and I, and I, and the way she yeah. edits her videos and I throw it in my pot, the way that Ellen DeGeneres is really quirky and funny, throw it in the pot. The yeah. way that Kevin Burkhart does this, throw it in my pot. So like, I'm taking a lot of things from different people. I'm like, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, right. but I'm trying to create my own sauce yes. where it works, but yeah. we're actually all borrowing. Yeah ideas from each other, but we're creating it in our own way. Exactly. We're, we're making it our own. And it's great to be a part of this group that, uh, 
you know, that we can do that off of. Yeah. You know, I can, I can text cam or Connor or whoever. Hey, how can we do this? How can we do that? So big ups to believe we can't make the whole episode about you guys, but just know we love you. <laughs> <laughs> cam and Connor are great, man. They're awesome. They are. They are. We're very, very proud and happy to be a part of the believe family and be sure to check out the website. That's B L E A V.com. So extra, mm-hmm. extra free promotion there. <laughs> yes, exactly. They'll be happy about that. Youth sports are more fun when everyone makes it to the right place at the right time. That's the magic of the free Sports Engine app. Now teams only need one app to share game and practice schedules, chat with teammates, RSVP to games, and more. Download Sports Engine today on your phone's app store. Sports Engine, the official app of youth sports. It's completely free. There you go. So, you know, in regards, I know you mentioned a couple guests that you had on while you were doing the, uh, the, the bar videos. Now, as a podcast, what are just some of your, you know, favorite guests? And uh, I, th- I get this question a lot as a podcast host. Is there a, a particular method you have when like maybe trying to not hunt down, but like find more guests for your show? Or do you work with like for us, we work with a couple different PR companies where they're like, hey, you know, this person wants to, inter- you know, want to interview this, this, that. Like, what's kind of your process with that? And who are some of your favorite um, interviews so far? I, I actually got asked this question um, by my spray tan lady. <laughs> <'Cause> it's really <laughs> funny. Uh-huh, <laughs> so uh-huh. she's like, she's like a really good friend of mine. Yeah. But she was asked, she works with a lot of influencers and she was okay. like, how do you pick guests? And I was like, it's so hard to explain because it's a feeling. And it's yeah. mainly like, I see them and I'm like, they, they work, yeah. they work. And I, and I, and again, I wish I could put a word to it or like mm-hmm. explain it. Yeah. But a lot of times it's, um, I, I'm, I'm really, I find myself very attracted to anyone who is willing to kind of put themselves out there and be vulnerable in a space sure. that they're not in familiar waters. I think that that's like the bravest thing a person can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like if someone has a conversation that's, I just find super intriguing because mm-hmm. some of the best conversations I've had actually um, was with a guy who is not famous at all. And yeah. it's a local bartender in Chicago who was my Dean in high school. Yeah. And he was like, let's do a podcast about being bartenders. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sure. And it like blew up. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, right. but it was fun to hear to like that kind of banter and back and forth was great. But some of the bigger name people I've had on, I mean, I just had on Scott Darling, who was the uh, backup goalie when the Blackhawks won in 2015. Mm -hmm. And he just is incredible. Like he's good now he's retired from hockey. He's going into stand up. Um, he's hilarious, like super dark twisted sense of humor. If you like that stuff. Um, but, but then I, the, the, the one that I loved in, in this episode actually didn't really, it didn't do great, but I didn't even care because it meant so much to me was I got to meet, um, Victoria Butler and she is the master blender of uncle nearest which is a whiskey based in just outside of Lynchburg, uh, Tennessee, where Jack Daniels is created. Yeah. And the story with Victoria is um, her great, great grandfather is the man who taught Jack Daniels how to create whiskey. Mm-hmm. And so being able to hear the like family lineage of, you know, she became a master blender at 58 years old. Like she started her second career at 58 and, yeah. and like the family lineage that she had. And even, and I feel that with like my family's bar, it's having been in my family, you know, since 1938, you know? So like there were a lot of those stories I really loved. Um, but even like LaRoyce from Chicago PD, I mean, I had no control over that interview, right. you know, like it was like, the, like I just threw the notes out because it was like, it was a, it was a free for all, but it was hilarious. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. So, so it really depends. Like it yeah. depends on the kind of, I think, conversation you're willing to have that day and like sure. where people want to go. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if that even answers your question, but, but finding, I, I would love to work with more like PR agencies because there's yeah. certain people I definitely would like to have on. Okay. Um, but it's hard to get certain people to come in, you know, oh, sometimes. It yeah. It I mean, I think when we first started, a lot of it honestly was just Instagram and it mm-hmm. was reaching out to people, whether if it was uh cosplayers, I think we had one on that was from Brazil and we had her on the show oh, wow. a couple of times and she was incredibly popular. I mean, she looked, uh, still looks like a fantastic Harley Quinn. I think she ended up moving to Paris actually. So a lot of it was just, Hey, this just kind of like you, you get that feeling. Like, I think that this person is probably gonna be a great, you know, addition to uh, whatever episode it is that we're covering. 
Mm -hmm. We did that for a while. And we still do that and get lucky on it sometimes. Like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to message The Rock and and expect a reply back. Like, sure, Brian, let me know what time. uh, (laughs) Let me uh, get you into my schedule. (laughs) Yeah, you you have to. It's like I have my like dream guest, you know, obviously that I'm like manifesting for one day. But then you also have to have the like who's realistic, you know, but like I'm I'm a big believer in like. I know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Yep. So I, I try to fall down those rabbit holes of who I think could help me out. I think that's the, uh, you know, the bartender in us. I mean, it's, it's networking people. A lot, a lot oh my people God. don't realize that it's not just as I, I bartended for 15 years. And I think the number one question we get, which doesn't really matter is, well, how many drinks do you know? Or do you know every single drink? And to me, I'm like, that's not the sign of a great bartender. You no. know, a great bartender is, is, is the service is the, yeah. that feeling of if you're having a crappy day, you know, I'm not saying it's there. It's our job to make you feel better, but we're definitely not here to make you feel worse. Oh, you know? yeah. So it's yeah. just that attentiveness. And I mean, we really are. I tell people all the time. I said, bartenders, we are unlicensed psychologists. I <laughs> call myself a barthopist, a bartender <laughs> slash therapist. I love it. And that's honestly what I have brought into. And you, I bet you could say 100% agree with me on this. Yeah. The amount of times I would come home, especially when I was still living with my parents and I would go, mom, I don't know why people tell me things. I I know, like I know too much. And she's like, no, you know, I think that's a good thing. Like people feel really comfortable telling you things. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's that. And again, that's why I wanted to create it. It's that there's something about a bar setting where you just, your, your walls are down. Yep. And it's beautiful. And and then I think it, those kind of honest conversations are ones that I crave. Like, not only is it good for the person sitting across from you, but they also like fill my soul in yeah. a way that like, I just, again, I, I leave and I'm like, that was a great conversation. Yeah. And I don't know why I had to meet that person, but I'm so happy I got to meet that person today. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's one of my most cherished experiences of my life and I always cherish it. I, I believe that we are spoiled as bartenders, especially good bartenders. I'm not saying like absolutely, you know, yeah. You know, the people that are behind the bar and on their phone the entire time that shit drives me up the wall. But you know, we do have that satisfaction of knowing that it is like dude, we were talking off camera earlier. You know that mm-hmm. it is like an external family that you adopt over the years, and uh, it's just it's it's great. <laughs> so I have a guy who comes in to my family's bar. His name is Mo. Mm. We, he and I, he's my 83 year old best friend is how I describe him. Okay. Um, I, my grandparents, my grand, yeah, my, my grandfather's grandpa's like died when I, so I never got to meet him. So to me, he's like my grandpa. Yeah. Um, but he has been coming into the bar now for probably like seven years. And what's great is I don't even know when he started doing this, but he makes me homemade food every time he comes in. Wow. So I get homemade pizzas, homemade beef rolls, yeah. homemade sandwiches, um, meatballs. I mean, you name it, the man makes it. And yeah. he never does it because he wants anything. It's just, right. you know, his wife has passed. His kids are all older and, and those his kids have kids. And so it's, and he's Italian. So Italian's way, uh, an Italian's way of showing love is, is by, is, is through food. It's through filling your belly. Yep. And so it's so funny because I actually like, have a very sensitive stomach, but the day that he comes in, I don't eat anything so I can eat everything <laughs> he makes me. And so he even said to me once, he's like, but Jenny, you like eat a lot. I'm like, I eat a lot when, just because of you. I actually don't ever eat this much Mo, like ever in the history of eating. And he always laughs, but I'm like, no, it's, it, but he, and in return has become like an extended part of my family. Like, you know, just not with me, but like my actual family. And we look out for him and we make sure he's okay. And especially last winter when, you know, winter was really bad here. We're like, Mo, what do you need? Like, is your car stuck in your garage? You need us to come over and get it. Like, can we plow it out? Like, what do you need? You know? Um, And they do become your friends and your family in a really like just unique and beautiful way. And and it's such a, if if anyone has been a part of it, you totally understand it. And it is one of the most like beautiful things of, of a community to be, to be a part of. That's true. That's true. Now I got, I got to ask on, on a pop culture subject. Now, do you have any favorite shows or movies like either they, they, like based on a bar or bar life or bartender life or anything like that? Ooh, um, I feel, so I've actually never seen cheers, okay. but I have been told by every single one of my mom and her eight siblings that <laughs> the, the man, the, whoever created cheers mm-hmm. came into Shinix and then wrote cheers okay. because it, it is very much like that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, I don't know. You know, I did, 
For the longest time, I I really enjoyed Shameless because it was a Chicago-based show and they have the alibi in there. And I I totally understood that like sense of that community. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's ever, if there's really like a bar, like I can think of a specific like bar show. The one show that I actually, I just finished watching last night is um, The Bear on FX. Yeah, which, with, the, with the, the guy from Shameless. Yeah, Jeremy Allen yeah. White. And it's, and I related to it on, again, working in restaurants for eight yeah. and a half years, yeah. having a family business. Um, it wasn't necessarily a bar setting, but that sense of like mm. having a family establishment, trying to grow it, yeah. um, you know, all of the, trying to stay true to your roots, but still evolve with the time. Like that show, if, if anyone is listening, like totally watch it. It was, I'm like, I need, I need a season two. Like if they don't renew this show and actually like, Jeremy Allen White has this this scene in the very last episode and it's just a single camera and they don't move off of him. And he's like in an Allen on meeting and it is probably one of the most powerful performances I've ever seen wow. from an actor. And I'm like, he could win something honestly, based off of that, that one alone. It was so beautiful. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll have to check that out. And that's on, um, what is that on? I, Cause I've been seeing, I've been seeing it pop up a lot lately. I was able to watch it on Hulu. Okay. Yep. 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 I think I did see it on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say, even though I'd like to see more, and I think as the years have gone on, always sunny in Philadelphia. I mean, Patty's Pub, mm-hmm. you know, even though it's not really based on the pub, it's based on the characters. Right. Uh, cheers a little bit just growing up. I think that's what kind of piqued my interest in bartending. And I know yeah. this movie gets a whole lot of shit, but I actually enjoyed Cocktail with Tom Cruise. <laughs> so. Oh, that's on my list. That's on my list. If someone told me I needed to watch that. So it's on my like never ending list of movies. Okay. Yeah. But that is. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece by any means, but <laughs> for the time period that it came out and just kind of like the Coglin's Law, yeah. his, his mentor, you know, throughout, mm-hmm. throughout the movie, I think he gives him some nice little tidbits and things like that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there needs to be more, I believe. A lot. Yeah. More. You know, I think it's hard. Um, cause I remember thinking like how even, even me for the longest time, I was like, I could write a show about this bar. Right. But then I think about it. I'm like, but how do you make it not like cheers? Right. Like how do you create an original show in a way that, you know, is just really special and unique. Yeah. Um, and I think what I've seen a lot of shows do is there's always the bar as like a character in the show, but it's never the centerpiece of the right. show, but it's a right. part of it. And so I think something, cause even like, you know, I was a big fan of like the Chicago series and the, they did a Molly's is an actual bar in Chicago. It's not called Molly's. I don't know the name of it, but that is in fire PD and med, you yeah. know? So it's, it's the Molly's is like a character in the show, but it's not, the show. Yeah. So I think that there you're seeing a lot of places understand that like, and again, I always understood this, like a bar is, is like a church. It's like a community in a sense. And, yeah. and it's really important to people. And it's not just to go there to drink and, and, and get wasted. It, it's yeah. more of like a meeting ground to talk with friends and, mm-hmm. and work things over and hash it out. And you laugh and you cry and you do everything in between. Like, I don't know. I just think about like things we've had at my family's bar. Like we've celebrated, we've celebrated baby showers, uh-huh. first birthday parties, yeah, um, engagement parties, weddings, mm-hmm. graduations, and funerals. Right. Like we're, we're celebrating all, we're celebrating all forms right. of life, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think people need the bars like that still. Agreed. I know I do. I know I very much do. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, and I'm sure you're the same way. I mean, I am a, for lack of a better term, I am a neighborhood hole in the wall bar guy. Like no yep. offense to the chains out there, but I'm not going to spend like my Friday night at Applebee's. You know what I mean? I'm going to go down to like a lot of people, the, the, you know, they, they get a little bit interested. I like my, my fiance and I, we hang out at a bar called Suds and Duds. And it's exactly what you think it is. It is a laundromat that also has a bar in the middle of it. And a lot of our like good friends hang out there. And to me, I'm like, this is easy. This is simple. This is like the family for the most part. Not everybody. Yeah. In, but same thing with Stumble Stillskins, which is where I bartended for a long time. You know, a really, really northern bar here in North Carolina. Big shout outs to the new owners, Allie and then everybody. And then the former owners, Flathers and all them. I mean, that was like well, everybody would call it Switzerland because whenever there was like other bars, like beefing over stupid shit or whatever, like Stumbles was always just neutral. Like, all right, yep. don't bring, don't bring your shit in here. 
and many of birthdays in there, uh, funerals, the, the whole nine yards, uh, mm -hmm. everything under the sun. My, my daughter has spent many a birthday at a bar, even when she was little. So not drinking, I grew but, up in, you know, yeah. I, I mean, my, I went to the bar after school, like yeah. it was daycare. Like yeah. I sat next to uncle Edgar while he drank his old style in a pint with pepper as I started my homework. And it was at his funeral that I learned that uncle Edgar wasn't my uncle. <laughs> and wow. I, my whole yeah. world was turned upside down. I was like, what yeah. do you mean? He's not my uncle, mom. She's yeah. like, well, you called him that. And I was like, but he's, I don't understand how we're not related. She's like, Jenna, there's no blood relation, like whatsoever. I was like 15 years old and like, couldn't even oh, think straight. Man. I was like, I, my life is a lie. I know nothing. Like what is going on? And then what's more funny now about that is his son. I call uncle Kevin, oh, who's wow. not my uncle, but he's uncle Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, in regards to a couple of your latest episodes, you get you get deep out there, Jenna. I mm -hmm. got to say, I love it, you know, but not like deep enough to or not not deep enough. I don't mean it like that. Not like so deep that you're turning people off. You're just very honest in yourself. Yeah. And, and I think that you you really use that to your advantage. And I mean, to me, it's, it's a very like every episode I've listened to so far. It's just, yeah, I'm going to drop some knowledge on you, but you're also going to feel good right after, you know, yeah. like uh, you know, I was. Uh, listening to the one the other day where you were talking about like, you know, it's okay to talk to yourself. That means like, you know, the universe, you're talking to the universe. I thought yeah. that was so awesome. And just like, yeah, cause I'll sit there, not like talk to myself out loud, but I'm like, all right, got time to check in. Got to get my mental check in. And uh, you're right. It's like, okay, you know, I just had to do that. And then uh, we were just talking off camera before about, Hey, look, no is a complete sentence. You don't have to when you say no, you don't have to give the whole spiel and song and dance. So, you know, if you can just kind of talk about those episodes and, you know, what what else uh, that people have in store for your upcoming episodes, too. Yeah. So I I had one of my, my old roommate. Um, I was having a really bad day um, when I lived with him back in 2021. And it was it was honestly I had pitched bar talk to a network, totally thought it was a home run. Like, like I thought it was a slam dunk Yeah. and they came back and said, we like you. It's just, it's just not now. And so I was distraught yeah. and I left and I cried and I got in my car and I cried and I drove around and just needed to like not be around people. Right. And when I came home and I told him what happened and he gave me a hug and he's not like a very huggy person. And he's like, Jen, I'm so sorry. I know how much you wanted this. And so I had to go back to editing a podcast. I'm sitting there editing with like my eyes blotchy and he looks at me and he goes, Oh my God, I have the perfect person for you to talk to. And I said, who? And he goes, Oh fuck, it's you. And I went, what? Right. <laughs> I go, what are you? And he's like, Jenna, every time I have an issue in my life, I go to you because yeah. you give me the most sound advice yeah. on the planet. Yeah. And, uh, I, I kind of at the moment didn't understand the like magnitude of what he was saying to me because I was still so hurt. Um, but then there was what all I can, it was like a come to God moment where I was listening to a Morgan Wallen song called I found myself in this bar. And there's a line in that when he says that. And I was like, Oh my God, like that's, that's it. Like I have found myself in the bar. And so it kind of became this thing where I was like, nothing good in my life happened until I started taking care of myself until I started making sure that like the relationship with me, like until, until my relationship with me was good, nothing in my life was good. Yeah. So I was like, and I wanted, and again, I was like, I feel like I have this like little secret wisdom that I know sounds weird for like a 29 year old to have, but I'm like, if I can share this with you and you, you do with it what you want, like you sure. can tell me to go fuck myself and that is totally fine, you know, or you can take it and, and use it and, it. and if it helps you great, like, so it, it, it really happened not as like, not the intention, the intention was never to be this like philosophical person. Um, <laughs> it was never the intention to do it, but it'd be. Kenny Damas. Yeah. But then I had so many friends who would come to me and then would reach out to me afterwards and they would be like, you have no idea how much like what you said just helped to me. Like, I wish more people could like benefit from this. And so those shorter episodes where I was doing those kind of became, I just started doing these like mini episodes yeah. and, and it was kind of like, do people like these shorter ones? And, you know, we'll still do the fun guest interviews and conversations because sure. I love those. But I think there's something too about like a quick 15 to 20 minute podcast where it's like, this is for you to make sure that you are the best version of you with yourself. Because when you're good with you, I like everything else lines up and it's just like fucking perfect. I, I just, I believe that in my heart because, because I feel like I'm living proof of that. Like everything good in my life happened to me once I had a good relationship with myself. Yeah. 
I love that. I love that. And it, I mean, it comes out, you know, it comes it's coming mm-hmm. out now through the mic. You, you, you can tell, especially us being in the service industry, when people are faking it. And, there, oh. and I think that's one thing I really, really love about your show. Like, there's no faking it with you. There's, you know, you're not you're not bullshitting the audience. No. You're straight up just real. Here here I am. You either love it, you hate it. You know, hopefully you at least kind of like it. I hope you don't hate it. But, yeah. you know, that, that's what it is. The I, I always say, I'm like, I don't think we give the audience the people in general, like enough credit for how smart they are. Right. Like people are smart. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, like we can read through bullshit really well. People yeah. can read, like, you know it, like you see someone and you're just like, no, absolutely not. Get out of my face. Like yeah. get out. And so that was like, I think one of the nicest compliments someone said to me was like, Jen, I feel like listening to your podcast is like, I feel like I'm actually just sitting down and like, that's how you talk in real life. And I was like, because that's how I am. Like yeah. what you see is what you get. Like, I'm not, there's no act. I'm not putting on a mask. I did that for a really long part of my life. And I didn't want to do that again. I wanted to just be honest. And in being the most honest version of myself, I had just found that like everything good came and, and, and that's scary, right? Like being honest is scary. Being honest with yourself. I mean, looking yeah. in the mirror and saying like, we're not good or like, right. I don't really like what you're doing. Like that's fucking terrifying. Mm-hmm. And, and I will also say in doing that though, like that's where growth comes and that's where you're going to be like really proud of yourself for like doing those things to be the best version of yourself moving forward. I could not agree more. Uh, you, you may know this or not. There's a few of us on the, on the podcast that we suffer from like anxiety, depression, things like that. So that's why, especially your line of when you speak to yourself, you're speaking to the universe. It really spoke to me because that's, you know, a lot of the, the soul searching because it is tough to have those conversations where you're looking in the mirror. It's like, dude, you're, you're fucking up like this. You're mm-hmm. better than this. You have to do better than this. You know, you have yeah. loved ones, family, whatever it may be like, let's, let's go. And uh, mm-hmm. I think once you realize that it's okay to check in with yourself and more people should, cause I think, you know, a lot of people, especially nowadays, and I don't want to get too off topic, but you know, they just kind of push their feelings to the side and just try to like deal. And it happens. It happens. I've done it before. I mean, I think yeah. everybody's done it, mm-hmm. but when, you know, as much as it may suck, trying to, you know, tackle the head on. And uh, you, just like you said, you know, good things will definitely come out of it. It doesn't seem like it, but it will. I, I have this analogy where again, maybe this is like growing up in an Irish family where we just were so used to sweeping everything under the rug. Um, I just knew I couldn't do that for me. And, and to me, that analogy is when you push your feelings down, it's like the, it's like a champagne bottle. Eventually it's going to pop. And what happens with it popping is you have no control over where it goes. You have no control over who you hurt. And that's, and that's the biggest problem is you end up actually hurting the people around you that you love the most. And like, you don't want to do that, man. Like I did that. And I was like, I fucking hate myself for doing that, you know? And, and, and again, not to get, I kind of want to pivot a little bit because you said something about like talking to yourself. I now try to talk to myself the way that I talk to my best friend and like, think about the relationships you have with your friends. You're always like, dude, you got this. Or like, come on, but you, 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 you are amazing at, you know, listening to me and doing all this and and you're your best friend's biggest cheerleader, like be your biggest cheerleader for you. And like, once you do that for you, like, I mean, it's, it sounds, and again, in the beginning, it sounds so corny because you're like, I just feel like everything's icky around me and I don't like these feelings and Uh I get it. Like I totally get it. But in return, what ends up happening is like, you just develop this like beautiful relationship with you because people in your life are going to come and go, but like, you are always, always there for you, no matter what. Well said. Well said. Goodness. I'm loving this episode. (laughs) (laughs) So as we mentioned earlier, and as you mentioned, I think this might have been off camera as well. uh, You know, things are finally starting to open back up a little bit uh, Mm -hmm. as far as concerts, movies, things like that. You know, hopefully it stays that way. We'll see what happens. But fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. So, what have you, you know, either seen or attended or anything like that this year, or what are you looking forward to coming up? Uh, you know, because now we're getting ready. Yeah, we are at the pretty much the halfway point of this year. What are you looking forward to coming out this year? Whether if it's like a concert you really want to check out, movies or shows or anything like that. Yeah. So um, I'll start with concerts. So I'm actually. I'm going to be working. I work this festival every year here. It's called the Windy City Smoke Out. I'm a big country music fan, love like all generations of country. Yeah. And Willie Nelson is performing and I get to see Willie fucking Nelson perform. 
Nice. Like yeah. what? Yeah. Like this man's going to be as high as a kite on stage and he's just going to fucking kill it. So <laughs> yep. I'm excited to see Willie. Um, I'm not really going to a lot of shows like at the moment, but that, but that lineup, it's Willie Nelson, Turnpike Troubadours, Tim McGraw, who I've seen, who's incredible, Sam Hunt and Miranda Lambert. And oh, wow. I've seen Miranda. Miranda's Miranda's just like a one of a kind artist. Yeah. She really is. So I'm excited to do that. Um, the other one that I'm excited to see movie wise, I really want to see Elvis. Oh, I really too. want to see Elvis. I, I grew up a huge Elvis fan because of my aunt. Like we had this thing called the Mexican Elvis party every year. Okay. Where basically we just had tacos, a pinata, and we'd play Elvis music with his cardboard cutout in a pool party. So it was, it was so much fun. And we did it like since I was a kid. So I grew up on Elvis a lot too yeah. because of my aunt. Um, so I'm curious and excited to see the story. And again, I think like just seeing some of the interviews that Austin Butler has done, it's like, oh my God, he seems incredible. And he, I feel like he's totally gone like completely method actor in it. Yeah. Um, I cannot wait to see Stranger Things uh, volume two. I am like geeking the absolute shit out yeah. for this because – I was a little reluctant. I'm not going to lie when I started the first part because it yeah. was actually really, I don't, gory is not the right word, but like it gave me exorcist vibes. And I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't like this. Like, yeah. but then someone had told, they're like, Jenna, just push through it. And yeah. I promise you'll be grateful. And I was like, this is some of the best. And, and again, it's so, you know, the, the storylines evolving with the characters and right. the, the characters are getting older now. And so it makes sense that it's getting a little bit more darker. Um, so I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Um, Jurassic world really want to go see Jurassic world that I I'm a big, I like Chris Pratt a lot. So um, I, I prefer him when his shirt's off. I mean, like, let's be real. <laughs> so if he could be shirtless the entire time, that would be great. Um, and then what else? I mean, I told you I saw a Top Gun Maverick and it just like blew me out of the water, like blew me out of the water. And, and I said, I've said this to so many of my friends, but I'm like, Tom Cruise saved movie theaters. Yeah. He saved movie theaters because I was someone who really believed during the pandemic. I was like, I just don't think theaters are going to exist anymore. Like, right. I just don't think we need them. Like, I like, you know, we were going through this weird, we're still kind of in this phase of like trying to figure out what we need and what we don't need. Yeah. And he, you know, the movie was done like years ago, yeah. but they waited and they, they were on streaming. No. Yep. And he was like, we're not putting it on streaming. We're not doing this. Like we have, this has to be in theaters. And I went by myself mm -hmm. and sat in the theater by myself and was like, I have never felt the need to fly an F-18 or fly anything <laughs> in my life, but I want to fly an F-18. I want to do this. I don't even know how I would do this, but I want to do this. Um, but yeah, that movie was just incredible. I need to go see it again. And then I actually, I need to watch all the Godfathers. I've only seen the first one, but I want to watch The Godfather and The Offer. Is it The Offering? So yeah, The Offer. Yeah. The offer. I want it because I've heard I've heard such great things about that. And and again, I think me, you and I kind of in this podcasting world, yeah. like entertainment is kind of um, it blends together in a weird yeah. way. But the the making of the movie, you mm -hmm. know, became a series, which is wild to think about, you know, but just seeing that, I think, would be awesome. Also, Pam and Tommy was great. If anyone wants needs a little series to watch, Pam and Tommy was like great and sad all at the same time. Yeah, I see. I didn't finish that, but I liked what I saw. I don't know yeah. why I stopped watching it. So I think I was like three or four episodes in. So I re I really need to go back and just finish. Yeah, it was it, it was a sad. I mean, the whole it just like made me sad. Like yeah. it was a great story because again, I I was I was a baby when all of this was happening, so I didn't really right. know. But seeing it and how it impacted the whole trajectory of her life it just it right. like broke my fucking heart, man. Yeah. Like oh my god. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at now with with movies. And I said the bear, like any totally watch the bear. They're and they're quick. They're like less than thirty minutes, um, yeah. which I kind of like those shorter um, episodes. And uh, just it was good. Like it's really and I like anything which anything Chicago based. I'm obviously very biased because I love because I I love when we have stuff that's that yeah. comes here because sometimes I think um, the city gets a little underlooked just because of New York and L. A. Sure. And there's so many sure. great like Chicago in itself is such a character. And, yeah. and because of that, it, it creates like you, you talk to any Chicago and like you are impacted and influenced by the city. And yeah. I think being able to see that in these characters in the bear was really, was really something special. 
I tell you, Chicago, I've only been there once. My sister lived there for about five years. She worked at the Navy base. I think you and I talked about this when we had our, our, our phone conversation. Mm-hmm. I, that's like my only regret, which the good thing is I'm still alive, so I want to be able to go more. Yeah. But I thought just architecturally, it was the most beautiful city I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh. And as part of not just like my childhood, but like growing up and even movies now, like I love movies that are based in Chicago. Yeah, I really do. I mean, everything from like all the, the like the John Hughes movies growing wow. up, you know, even if they're just in the suburbs. But I remember like I think my first kind of introduction to Chicago was the movie Adventures in Babysitting. Um, just, you know, things like that. And then nowadays, like Vince Vaughn, I, I feel like all his movies are pretty much based in Chicago, which is which to me is great. Yeah, and I know he's and, from there. So and I he's it. from there. And I think yeah. and, it, and it's cool to see, you know, different types of actors and actresses in the industry who like they, they go to LA because you have to like, right. That's part of the gig. You got to go there. You got to make a name for yourself. And then they come home and they create these stories home because they realize how rich it is here. Yeah. And even now just with like the, all of the Chicago series that have been on NBC now for God, I want to say fire fires coming up on almost 10 years, which yeah. is wild to think about, you know, right. and just the impact that it's had in the, the, you know, just entertainment in Chicago and how it's influenced, you know, more people to be in Second City and we're getting more actors right. and actresses and just getting more films here is, has been really cool. Um, and it's just like really unique to see. So any any Chicago-based stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally down. I'm a hometown girl. Nothing wrong with that. Always, yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> all right. So before we wrap up, we are going to do a little little segment for this or that. Um, you know, I'm going to give right. you two things to choose from. You got to pick one or the other. You can you can give an explanation. You don't have to give an explanation. We'll go from there. I think I got the, the music queued up here. Got my little corny music. So welcome to this or that on Zero Dark Nerdy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I found this the other day and I was like, I have to use this more often. All right. So we'll go ahead and get this thing started here. Okay. All right. Let me turn that off. Okay. So number one, mm-hmm. Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks? Mm. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Tom Hanks. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. I would have gone with Tom Hanks. He's my favorite. Mm-hmm. All right. Wine or whiskey? Oh, my God. You literally picked my two favorites. Do you know how hard that is? Uh, it's pretty tough. Damn it. Oh, my God. Um, mm, I'm going to go with whiskey. Okay. Love that. Love that. Yeah, all right. Chipotle or Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, is there even really a winner in this one? <laughs> There's not a winner. Um, I'm going to uh, Chipotle. Okay. 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 Biggie or Jay Z? Biggie. Okay. Come on. Come All right. On. I love the confidence. I, yeah, I was gonna Come say on. there it is. And I had these written out before we even got on camera. That's so funny. Oh my <laughs> god, I love that. <laughs> All right, Star Wars or Star Trek? Okay, I'm gonna have to say neither because I've never seen either of them. <laughs> okay. All right. Neither is definitely an option. All right. You, uh, let's see here. IPA or seltzer beer? Seltzer. I hate IPAs. Same here. So I don't think, I think IPAs had a great moment and then people don't realize that your gut just expands outward. It is not good guys. I don't need my beer to taste like earth. No, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. And that's Mm -hmm. what I feel all IPAs are. All right. Last but not least. And it's funny that you brought this person up earlier because I feel like this is a pretty tough one and you can think about either one of them with their shirts on or off. Chris Pratt or Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> I have a thing for the Chris's I have for years. Um, my girlfriend is going to murder me for saying this because she literally started polls because of us uh-huh. getting into a debate of who the hottest Chris was. And I got to go with with Chris Pratt. Hey, hey, to each his own. You know, there's no wrong answer here. You just there's gotta, no wrong answer. But again, fun. it's like I'd, I'd, I'd like them both yeah. shirtless to be picking me up right. walking all over the place. Right. That's exactly. an option. It's I one of those things too. to where you have to make a decision or you know, a bad, bad thing is going to happen to you. I don't want to use any analogies out there with everything going on in this day and age. So excellent. Now, before we wrap up here, love, you want to go ahead and tell everybody, you know, how to find you, where to find you, all that fun stuff for all things. Jenna Duddleston. You got that? it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so you can find Bar Talk with Jenna across all platforms, Sp- Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeart, you name it, it's there. Um, we are on Instagram. 
Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. It is just at Bar Talk with Jenna across the board. And then my personal page is Jenna C. Duddleston, which again is a mouthful. But if you find Bar Talk, you'll find me. It's very easy. So there you go. Be sure to check her out. We'll definitely have her back, uh, you know, with Stranger Things coming out like this Friday. We can have you back for the Stranger Things episodes. So. Oh, my God. I I was I considered rewatching all of them from beginning to end. But then I was like, wait a second. I'm probably gonna have to wait two years for the next season to come out. So let's watch this and then I'll rewatch them all over again. Excellent. But we'll definitely have you back on. Be sure to check out Jenna on Bar Talk with Jenna, part of the Believe Podcast Network. As always, check out our good friends over at betonline.ag and Red Cinemas. For those of you here in the triad area, redcinemas.com. Jenna, hang out with us for just a little bit. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow all things Zero Dark Nerdy on social media and your favorite podcast network. And we will see you next time. Peace. And anger management? Fuck anger management. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube. Hey, it's Michelle Beadle. That's right, the Michelle Beadle. You're welcome. You love talking about sports. I love talking about sports. You know the only thing cooler than talking about sports? Sports! And right now, all your favorite sports are on Sirius XM. I'm talking every NFL game, every game from the NBA, NHL, MLB, every NASCAR race, golf major, major conference college sports, and all the top games in the WNBA. If it gets your heart pumping, it's on Sirius XM. To start your free, free, free trial of Sirius XM today, visit SiriusXM.com slash believe.